one of my comments lately on my YouTube channel. <laughs> How do you sharpen a shear differently if you know your customer is going to be using it mostly for slide cutting than you would for maybe like regular cutting? So this is the shear we're going to look at today and I'm going to sharpen it for the purpose of slide cutting. And then I'm also going to talk about a unique thing that we can do to shears and uh, some come that way that are used almost entirely for slide cutting. So we'll take a look at this today. If that sounds interesting to you, watch on. I'm going to be standing to sharpen today so you're a little further from me than usual when I'm doing these videos. Um, appreciate those of you that subscribe and come back all the time, but I realize from my analytics that most of you are, this is totally foreign to you, or maybe you're knife sharpeners and you're thinking about transitioning into shears. This one is kind of tricky because stylists like to slide cut. That means they get into the hair and they just slide through it. And that means these shears have to be very sharp. And I'm not so much concerned with whether they push hair. What my concern is, are they sharp enough and smooth enough so they won't bog down? Because you don't want to go through the hair and then it kind of rips the hair. So this is my Cymac Junior. Back here is my HD. And I've just decided I'm going to sharpen some more shears with the Cymac Junior because I don't have that many with this machine. And we sell both of these. You have to have a flat home to do this successfully. You really do. Um, I know some people want to cut corners, and it, it's just not a good thing when you're talking about, these are probably, this is a Sam Vila. You don't want to take the chance of messing one of them up. So I'm setting up my light on my machine. The Cymac Juniors, you can use these little lights that we sell, but you have to use the adapter because the body is plastic, whereas and on the HD, it just sticks on there. So I'm coming in here. I'm going to turn on the light. I'm going to take these shears apart. These have a whole lot of nicks in them. Um, let's just see how they come to begin with. Yeah, can you see that? It's folding the hair. So... And they make a noise. Listen. So I'm going to take these apart, clean them up, work my ride line. Now this is a 2,000 grit stone. I'm doing a lot of slide cutting. I may want to go with something a little finer. Uh, let's see what I've got in here. My stones. This is a 2,000. 6,000 grit. I think I'm going to use that today. Might use both the stones. So I'm going to take my San Vila apart. And these are pretty easy to take apart. Why do you take them apart? Because you can't do the rod line successfully without having them apart. This one has a little spring underneath this, so make sure anytime you take shears apart, you do it over a table. Watch what's happening, because things can go flying out. And when they do, it's sometimes really hard to find it again. Because this is so nicked up, I'm actually going to use two stones. So let me do a few strokes with my 2,000 grit. A lot of pressure over the pivot. Yeah, it looks a little wimpy right here. I know you can't see it. Let me bring you in closer. Sounds going to be a little better too, I think, with me a little closer to you. As you can tell, I'm not a professional videographer. I don't have a team of people working for me. It's just me in the back of my little sharpening area working on these. And... Yes, I've got a ride line all the way down. It looks wimpy right in here, but it's there. This is the 2000 grit. 
Looks good. This has the Teflon right in it. Uh, you see that in some shears. It just makes them a little quieter, a little smoother. Now I'm going to put my 2000 grit up. I'm not going to use it again. Move it on down there. And I'm going to go on down to my 6000. Now, I work the rod lines first for a couple of reasons. I think it's um, it sets my foundation before I go into the sharpening process. Number two, in the factories that I have worked with and I've, I've trained with inside, inside a couple of factories, one in the USA and one in Germany, and then I've worked with other um, factory owners that have come to the United States. And all of them, by and large, that I've dealt with would do the ride line first. Then you might go back again. But the, the basic laying it down works really well when you do it first. Now, here's the trick. I'm going to set my clamp at a 45 or a 50. At least 45. Some of these high-end shears, and I don't think this one's ever been sharpened, I might be able to pump it up to 50. Now, a lot of people believe in freehand sharpening. I believe in a clamp because I know what my angle is. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work my way down and I'm rotating it so that I get that convex shape. And I've got to burr all the way down. And this was at a worn 400. Really worn. I'm going to go to a worn 800. Because I want this edge really smooth. I might even drop this down to see what else I've got in here. A 2000 grid. These are Velcro. Now I've had some people that have a difficulty when they use Velcro in a cushion plate of creating a little dippity doodah back in here. One of the tricks I've learned in teaching and I want to shout out to Mary and Anastasia because they helped me with this <laughs> they were learning and they were having problems with it and we touched like this and like that you see the two rings in here let me stop it so you can see well I didn't do a real good job on the rings did I let's see if I can get it back in that there we go so I think you can see it now. Can you see the two rings? When I come in here, if I think about, I put a line here at the shoulder so I can see where I am. And I think about landing it between the two rings with that line at the shoulder here. That will keep me from putting too much pressure here and putting that tip up and creating a dip and then trying to straighten it up. And if I pull it out, just keep worrying about what's touching in this area. And I'm going to kind of feel and see if I've got all the nicks out. You can sort of feel with your finger. Sometimes you need a fingernail. Ah, oh, there's a big old nick here. This was really nicked up. It's not going to slide cut if there's a nick in it. I'm going to have to go back to my little bit coarser grit. This is that worn 800. You see I've got the rings in it for the last person I trained. That's going to be my new way of doing this. So I'm worrying about what touches in that center here. 
because that's kind of my sweet spot on my plate. I still feel that nick right there. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's gone. I think it's gone. Let's go back to the 2000, make it look pretty. Here is one of the things I do if I know they're primarily slide cutting. Is I'll do the polish. Look at there. Look at there. This is one of these things. Don't do as I say. Don't do as I do. And I, when I sat this here, I was thinking, I shouldn't do that. It's too dangerous. I could stab myself. And I just did. It's not bleeding, but it could have been. So take it out and lay it on the table. Don't leave it in the clamp sticking up like I just did. I'm going to polish all the way to the edge. I'm going to go up a little bit. Normally, if you've watched any of my videos or come to my training, I don't polish to the edge. But I'm looking for something that will be super smooth. And I think that'll do it. So I'm going to do all these same steps with the other blade. So I've worked both of these shears on the outside, finished with the polishing. I'm going back to my 6,000 grit stone. You know, you could use an 8,000 if you wanted to. 6,000 I think is going to be plenty fine enough. Um, I'm going to pull my burr off, and I can see it across here. Is it gone? And I'm going to go back to my polish, but this time I'm still, as I have in the past, I'm going to up it a little bit and polish to the edge, but make sure I don't run over the edge. Because I want it nice and super sharp, but I want it really, really smooth. And when we're through, I'm going to bring a mannequin in here and we'll see how this thing slide cuts. And then I'm going to show you a trick. that I don't do on all shears. I'll tell you in a minute. feeling as I go through they better feel nice and smooth and very very sharp now you really don't want to do this on shears that are an inferior steel because it just won't hold that sharp edge and your customers won't be very happy with you when they go dull immediately. And the little spring that comes underneath this leaf is not something we normally stock. So, and these will have a little tighter feeling adjustment because of that spring. So I'm going to do on my single ply tissue first. Because there was a big old nick up here. I want to make sure that's gone. cross over a little bit too much. Let me let you see what I'm talking about. It's a little bit too much of an overlap and so my fingers it's sharp here. I'm going to very carefully very carefully bend these. I don't want to break them. 
and I want to bend this going in. Just a tad more. You do an easy squeeze and if it moves, so that's lined up good. Let me go grab the mannequin and let's see if these slide cut. So here's my mannequin. And what we're talking about slide cutting is it can run the shears through the hair and it's just sort of just the sharpness of the edge slides through it. And that's slide cutting. Now let me talk about one other thing about the slide cutting. So these shears are done. They're going back to the customer. But I want to show you another shear. This is our Benica Ocean shear. I'll let you take a look at it here. And it's changed its models over the years a little bit, but this one is for slide cutting. Stylists who do a lot of slide cutting very often open their shears wide and they work in this area to slide cut. Others work in that area. If they're slide cutting way back here, a lot of times it'll jag and, and not cut right because the sweet spot of the shear is right there. This shear is designed for those that like to slide with it pretty far open and then close as they go. I'll show you how it works and then I'll show you the modification that we do right here in our facilities on this shear. So if I have it wide open and I don't know if you can hear the difference in the sound, it's a softer, easier, less of a ripping cut. So here's what we do in the modifications. So this is a very, very sharp angle, 50 degrees. But if I turn this back and forth to the light, do you see that little white shiny line right along the edge? Now normally if I was sharpening a pair of shears or I'm teaching someone to sharpen, I would say, oh, there's a spot that you did not get a burr. So what I've done on this shear, the blades, both blades are super sharp, but right in this area on one side, this finger rest side, it's a blunt angle. It's still a little sharp, but it's mostly blunt. And let me show you how that's done. Now, if you're getting one of these shears and you're sharpening it, you don't have to. <laughs> and I'm giving away my secrets here. This is terrible, I guess. But um, And this will work on the HD or the Junior or any flat home. Um, I use my curve adapter and on this blade I'm just going in here and taking off my edge, blending it out. And so if you can look in the light you can see this area is not as sharp as the other. Now make sure you remove any burrs that you keep it smooth but that allows this to be really really smooth and soft as you slide cut through. And so this shear it will push back here, but you want it to push. It's designed to do a little pushing and sliding. And that's the ocean shear that we modify. And we can modify any shear to do this, or we could take that out if someone for some reason didn't want it. Um, but once again, this is a harder steel. So anytime that you want to set up a shear for slide cutting, you want to make sure you've got a really hard steel. But a 440C will slide cut anything that or even better. It's going to do a better job. So I hope that answered the questions about sharpening shears for slide cutting. I think you're going to have some really happy customers if you go through those steps. Hey, I'm Bonnie McGowan and this is what I do. About every Monday I'll be uploading a new video. So if you want to see them and catch them, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any comments or suggestions of some videos you'd like to see, make sure you let me know. I answer all the comments. Now, if you're looking for the tools that I used in this video and the different things that I used, those should be in links below or on the product page, or if not, you should find them on my website, Benika.com. Uh, there's all kinds of things in the description below on how you can connect and contact me. So stay sharp. I'll see you in the next video.